How's it going everyone? It's your boy Dak908 aka the Dig Dug himself. Yours truly back with some more Moss Hunter Generations and today Grimclaw Tigrix, the deviant Grimclaw Tigrix. You guys you guys rather have spoken and you want to see me do Grimclaw and here we are today with Grimclaw. So I'm going to be giving you guys a pretty decent breakdown of the Grimclaw and what he's about and what you can expect to to see when you fight him and you know what he expects to give to you once you defeat him multiple times over because we all know how deviants and whatnot works. But before we get into, you know, nigger details like that, let's first talk about how you can actually unlock this guy. Now, before you actually get to unlock the deviant Grimclaw Tigrix, you're going to have to first complete the HR6 quest, What a Girl Wants. After completing this quest, you can go to your feline cat or your your housekeeper, what have you, and just purchase the tickets per usual, you know what I mean? We've been through this day, time and time over again. But with that out of the way, Grimclaw Tigrix, some of the first things you'll probably notice about him right off the jump is that his coloring. His coloring is similar to standard Tigrix, but his arms, his forearms, where in which he is definitely classified as the pseudo weaver due in part that his arms and wings are attached together as opposed to being separate. They are blue. They're blue with, with red veins going through them. His head also has, has a huge spot of blue on it as well. Uh, these things are probably the first things you'll notice. Secondly, you'll notice that he is larger, which is part of the course for Deviant Monsters them, themselves being bigger than the standard variants. But outside of those physical features, that's pretty much it. The Grimclaw Tigrix, everything is in the pudding, okay? A lot of his attacks do retain some of the same abilities from standard Tigrix, but I will say that the Deviant Grimclaw Tigrix is a bit different than his standard counterpart in the fact that he, in my opinion, is a smarter fighter. Now, I know that doesn't really mean a whole lot for you guys, but just understand that Grimclaw Tigrix, his network of abilities are a little bit different. He has feints, he has uh, cross-ups, he has mix-ups, he has attacks that you would normally see from the standard Tigrix, but he does, he goes about them a different way that allows you to think that, okay, I'm going to be hit in this fashion or in this, you know, aspect or whatever, but he changes it up on you, which is really interesting, which makes him a pretty hard monster to fight. For instance, his main feature is his Grim, I'm calling it the Grim Claw Slam, where he will stomp, stomp around, boom, 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 and every time he stomps around, he actually gives tremors. So you can tell when he's going to do the Grim Claw Stomp when he, uh, when he's slamming around and the ground around him changes color. I'm not sure the color looks like the same color explosion would be, but when that happens, that's when his tremor is out. When he does that, he can either have the tremor go in a vertical straight line or horizontally. Think similar to that of the Shirt Garu Magala, where in which it would do its little blast thing and it would actually go in a straight line or off to the side. Now, another attack in which he feigns you out is that he will do his charging attack. Like, you know how he'll charge and spin around and charge again? But at the end of it, he will turn. At a, at a different angle and then push a rock at you, but he won't push a rock at you straight. He'll actually throw the rock in a curve because normally you would fight a Tigrix by circling around him. He will go with that curvature of your circle and hit you with this rock. I mean, he, he's pretty interesting. It's a couple of the attacks in which this guy has that it, uh, you know, deems worthy for closer inspection, but for the most part, they're all relatively the same thing. You know, it's slight variance on things that he already had uh, he hasn't he has this one attack where it's not even an attack it's the real faint where he will charge around and you know how when he'll charge 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 and he'll do the, the tail sp spin or whatever he won't actually do it he will go into the position to do it and then back off it's kind of weird you, you don't I don't see him do it often but it's a thing anyway now that's out, that rather is out of the way let's talk about the man's weaknesses now the weaknesses to Grimclaw Tigrix are very similar to his standard counterpart, the regular Tigrix. He has the highest weaknesses of Thunder followed by Dragon. Think of him as like a reverse Rathalos. Rathalos and Tigrix have had these same weaknesses forever, but Tigrix had them flipped in terms of, you know, potency. Now, you can look at these hit zones, his head being the hardest hitting hit zone, well if you hit it that is, when he's enraged with a blade weapon. So if you're a great sword user and you're really nice on your adept dodging and whatnot, you can be in good position to actually hit him with some serious damage, some serious thunder damage if you will, if you hit him in the head. Now one thing I like to mention really quickly, if you look at where it says claw and then break, his claws or his front forearms if you will, they have pretty good 
armor on them so when you do get to break them i mean it's still not even worth the the real attack to it so what you're really going to want to do when you fight this guy is going to like tend tend to hit him behind his for his forearms okay in minus forearms hit him on his head again bring the thunder followed by the dragon everything else not so much i mean you could probably get away with some water but i really wouldn't push it too much further outside of those two things and i like to think that by now you guys have probably a really good thunder and or dragon weapon all right so assuming that everyone is caught up to date on how deviant monsters work we all know how to actually get the deviant monster gear you have to you know fight the monster get the tickets or what have you i'm not really going to explain it right now because i've explained it in practically all my other deviant monster videos but if you would like me to explain it i will totally do so but you have to let me know ahead of time so like in the next video if you would like for me to explain it i'll do so there but if you don't want to wait till then you can check out any of my other videos and i explain it but with that being said let's move over the deviant Tigrix armor is pretty gosh darn good. Like I'll admit, it's some good stuff. I would totally use it as some great sword armor because it gives you critical draw, part breaker, and the Grim Claw Soul, which combines high grade air plugs and speed eating plus two. So critical draw, if you don't understand what that means, critical draw when you draw your weapon to attack, it's going to be a critical hit every single time you do it. So like maximum damage. Part breaker, you do more damage. Well, excuse me, you actually break parts of monsters easier. That's, it's in the namesake, you know what I mean? And high grade air plugs, I mean, come on, high grade air plugs, you can block all monster roars. With speed eating plus two, you're able to take potions and eat meats way faster than normal. That's some good stuff. Complemented with some focus, yeah, with focus, and you have a pretty good greatsword set, as I would imply. Grimcall Tigrix weapons are really good, I'll be the first to admit. They have... Really good attack. Like I can't, I can't really, I can't really get mad at it. They start off at 170, end up being around 200. All of his weapons tend to be like that. Now the affinity is plus 10, and truth be told, when you look at these weapons, and then look at Silverwind's weapons, they're kind of the same thing. Uh, just that Silverwind has more affinity and a little bit more white sharpness. But then again, the white sharpness this monster's weapons give you anyway are really, really good. So truth be told. Pick up, pick up any of these weapons, you're in good hands. I mean, it's all good stuff. If you're really cool and down with raw weapons or raw damages and everything, this is some good stuff for you. Straight up. But with that being said, everyone, it's been your boy, Dak908, a.k.a. The Dig Dugger himself. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video right here about this Grimclaw Tigrix. Is there things that I've left out purposely? Yes, I can think of like 10 things I left out purposely. But it's on you guys to figure that out because they aren't really things that are really too important to the Tigrix. I want you guys to go into the fight with a bit of knowledge, or with everything you totally need to actually complete, you know, the quest with, but I'm leaving it on to you to actually show some real finesse and do it all yourself. But that's just how I teach people, and that's how I prefer to teach you guys. But with that being said, it's been your boy, and as always, let me know what monster you want to see in the next video. Take care.